What does typical retirement spending look like? Many people are calculating retirement spending all wrong. Retirement planning is an extremely important part of your financial planning, and I'd argue it's so important that proper planning can allow you to spend more before you retire and spend more during retirement without worry. Stick around and I will explain how people typically spend their money in retirement and how to plan better. Hi there, Colin Exelby here and I'm a certified financial planner professional and I provide financial planning for business owners and their families that just make sense. I own the financial advisory practice Celestial Wealth Management and provide advice virtually to clients all over the country. Most people have blindly accepted retirement planning assumptions that are so basic they can cause you to oversave and underspend and may cause some of the anxiety that people have around money. Did you know that the way most people spend money in retirement doesn't resemble that typically seen ever increasing straight line from the lower left to the upper right? I have been providing retirement planning advice for over 20 years and I observed something quite different. You see, retirement spending actually looks more like a smile. When you first retire, you often spend a little bit more than you anticipate. Many retirees spend the first few years of retirement doing all of those bucket list items that they wanted to do while working and raising children, but they didn't have the time. Traveling, buying a vacation home, buying a motorcycle, home renovations, and buying a boat are some of the things that I've seen retirees buy in the first few years of retirement. Then, as those items get crossed off the list, annual spending typically begins to decline. For retirees with children, grandchildren are often born, and more of retirement is spent through time with the family rather than spending money on bucket list items. And often spending time with the family is less expensive, and you can have a significant reduction in retirement spending during that time. But costs typically do rise significantly later in life as more money is spent on health care. As we get older, things don't work as they used to. I'm finding that out right now and I'm only 43 at this point. And more trips to the doctor occur. And as we age, we may need assistance to do the things that used to come naturally. This rise in spending can include increasing care from in-home to assisted living to nursing home care. Let's head on over to the whiteboard and take a look at what this might look like in a sample financial plan. All right, we are here over at the whiteboard and we are gonna look at some retirement planning. We're gonna look specifically at the differences in retirement spending between using the straight line inflation adjusted expense approach and the smile approach that I just talked about. And we'll actually put some numbers to it, all right? So here we go, I'm gonna share my screen and here we go, let me just move out this logo so you can see. We're working with Ross and Rachel Geller. If you're a fan of the 1990s sitcom Friends, you'll remember Ross and Rachel Geller. They're doing great, they're still together. They've got their daughter, Emma, she's 19 years old. She's in her first year of college. Thank goodness they've been saving for that. We're gonna go through their financial situation briefly and take a look at their retirement spending, all right? So you can see right here that on their balance sheet, they've got a net worth of 2.7 million at the moment. So let's take a look at their profile and you'll see in their profile, they've got checking and savings accounts. They've got a little bit of credit card debt that they pay off each month. They've got some investments. Ross has a solo 401k because he owns his business. He's working as a consultant in museums around the country as a paleontologist. Uh, so he's got 1.1 million in his solo 401k. They've got an investment account as well, $204,000 uh, in that investment account. Rachel's got her 401k, half a million dollars in there. Like I said, they've got a 529 for Emma's college education and Ross has a profit sharing plan that he recently started. They also live in New York, own that home in New York, 
an $850,000 home that they bought for half a million. Um, they also have a loan on that home. They started with 400,000, they did it in 2011, and there's $300,000 on the balance. And of course, they've got their insurance, group disability for Rachel, group life. Rachel's got a whole life policy. Uh, she's got a little bit of term insurance as well, and Ross has term, so they've covered themselves on that front, okay? And of course, they're working with a great financial planner, so of course they've got these things set up. So, what are we gonna look at? Well, um, we're gonna go over here and look at their income real quick. Ross has got a salary of 60,000 that he pays himself as the owner of the business. He's also got a K-1 distribution uh, outside of the business of $250,000 uh, that uh, you know separates his salary as, uh, from the dividend distribution. And then Rachel's still working, doing great, making $130,000. They've got their social security estimated in here. Uh, they're still saving in both 401k plans and the profit sharing plan. Uh, their expenses, currently they're spending about $18,000 a month on various expenses, not including the house and not including any insurance policies. And their goals, they wanna retire at age 67 with $10,000 in monthly expenses that does not include the home uh, and does not include healthcare costs, which we can see right here, 5,700 each for both of them, which is the national average currently. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna inflate those healthcare costs at 5% a year, and we're only gonna inflate everything else at 2.5%, because healthcare costs have been rising faster than general inflation. You might argue it'd be even higher than 5%, but for this purpose, we're gonna use a 5% inflation rate on healthcare costs. They've got their long-term care costs. They're gonna get two years worth of coverage of in-home care, uh, the last two years of each of their lives. All right, they're gonna relocate their home uh, in 2026. They're gonna sell their current home, move into that one. That's a goal of theirs. Uh, of course, Emma's college goal that they're funding right now. And they get two cars uh, paid for $80,000 in today's dollars every seven years. Okay, and then of course, they're paying for Emma's wedding. They're planning for $30,000 in today's dollars. Who knows what that'll be, but that's their plan. All right, so what we're doing here is we're looking at their retirement. And in their retirement, in the base case plan, they've got an 80% chance of success. And what that assumes is that they never change anything. They stick to this plan, guns blazing, no matter what happens in the world. These plans take into account scenarios that we can't even imagine, depression-like scenarios, you know, horrible things that could happen and they assume that you never change your lifestyle. My guess is if another Great Depression came around, probably they would cut back their spending a little bit or maybe they wouldn't take an inflation adjustment on their spending. Uh, they would adjust some things within their living if the world changed significantly. Okay, so I typically will tell people that if they've got a chance of retirement of 75% or higher, that I feel pretty comfortable in telling them that they can retire. Obviously, the higher you get to 100%, the better, but shooting for 100%, I think, you know, if you get there, great, but I don't think you really need to because little changes in the plan can really help things, and we're gonna show you that right now, okay? So in this base case scenario, they got an 80% chance of success. We're gonna look at their cash flows, and specifically we're gonna look at their cash flows when they retire, okay? So we're looking at their expenses. And as you can see, right now when they're in their 50s, their living expenses are rising every single year by the rate of inflation. In this plan, it's 2.5% a year. And then they retire. When they retire, their expenses have dropped some because they're not gonna live on as much. We just said 10,000 a month plus the other expenses. So in retirement at age 67 and 65, their retirement expense is 165,421. In this base case plan, what we're doing is we're increasing that two and a half percent every single year throughout their entire retirement all the way down to the end. So in this first scenario, what we're using is inflation adjusted expenses, which assume that your expenses just continue to rise sequentially every single year. But like I just talked about, that's pretty unrealistic. And most people, their 
plans do not work in that fashion. Okay, so we're gonna look at what things look like in a different scenario. So if I go back over here to the profile tab and I go into the goals here, I'm gonna adjust their retirement. We're still keeping this $10,000. But what I'm doing is I'm changing the spending strategy. Now in my system, I've got five different ways to look at how to adjust retirement spending. And we're talking today about retirement spending smile, right? So I'm gonna choose that and I'm gonna hit save. And now we've changed the base case to instead of increasing every single year, what we're actually doing is we're reducing the expenses every single year. And as we do that, you know, they're still inflating at two and a half percent, but we're reducing what they're actually spending. So if I come back over here to retirement, look at this, it just changed from 80% to 91%. And the assets in the plan increased. And the only reason that that happened is because we changed how those expenses have, are, are occurring. So let's go into the cash flows here. And if I go into the expenses again, and I look at the living expenses, and I look at them in retirement, what you'll see is in year one, 165,421. And then in year two of retirement, they actually slightly decline. Because what I'm actually doing is lowering the expenses by 3% a year on your base expenses, while inflating for two and a half. So, Essentially, they're going down by half a percent a year, okay? All throughout the time, right? So they get smaller and smaller and smaller, which you might think intuitively is opposite of what would happen. But like I said, we're only doing that for these expenses. If we look at the housing expenses, they've got the principal and mortgage interest. Property taxes and insurance are increasing every single year all the way through the plan. So those costs are going up. And we look at healthcare. When Ross and Rachel are in retirement, you'll see their healthcare costs and they're increasing at 5% a year. So we add these together, we're looking right over in this area here on the total healthcare costs. These are increasing at 5% a year over time, much faster than inflation, okay, as those expenses go up. So if we go back to their expenses, we're deflating these ones because as you get older, you do less and less, but we're inflating housing and healthcare. So now that we're over here in the total expenses, once they get to retirement here in 2034, what you'll see is this number right here in their first year of retirement starts to increase as we move down slightly every single year until you get out here, they no longer have insurance premiums and they rise again. But they're not rising at the same rate because I'm deflating these living expenses. This is how you get the smile approach. You're lowering the expenses of the things that you do during retirement because as you knock them off your bucket list, you don't have as many of them, but you're increasing the cost of housing and of healthcare throughout time. And that is a much more realistic way to look at retirement, in my opinion. So if I go back to this analysis on the first page here, I've got the current plan and the proposed plan. What I can go down here into this action items is I can actually look at this and say, all right, in the current plan, we've got retirement spending smile, right? I changed it to that. Let me do over here, inflation adjusted in the proposed plan. And let's compare what they look like. If it works the way that it's supposed to, this number should drop to about 80. There we go. 80% here, 91% in the scenario where we're using the smile approach, which again is much more realistic. So you have a much better chance. And I think is a much better way to show this stuff. Now, the nice thing is I can run through all these different strategies in here with Ross and Rachel Geller to look at different things. And we're gonna do some other videos about this stuff. Social security planning, whether we should use their current strategy or an additional strategy. Debt strategy, student loans, education strategy, and of course the retirement spending. What I can do actually right now, you know what? 
just for the heck of it. We'll go into the profile section. We'll go into the goals, we'll go into retirement. We'll change this to inflation adjusted as the base case in the plan, okay? We come back over here to retirement. And now the current plan we've got is that base case inflation adjusted, right? So we change that now it's base case inflation adjusted. Now I'm gonna change this in the proposed plan to be the retirement spending smile. And I'm gonna say instead of the current strategy, which is for Ross and Rachel to take social security at age 65, which really isn't a good scenario for them, we're gonna change this to an optimal, not early as possible full retirement age or age 70, but let's, do, let's use the software to figure out the optimal strategy. Okay, just by changing these two things, let's hit refresh and see what their retirement changes to. All right, we added on another percent of probability of success going from 91 to 92 by adding in that social security. So this is a great way to use financial planning tools to help clients figure out how they're doing things, but also to help you understand the smile-based approach to retirement planning. So that's it for this session of the whiteboard. Let's head on back over. All right, I hope that example was really helpful in helping you understand what happens with retirement spending. Look, in my opinion, when you're creating a financial plan, as much focus should be placed on the retirement spending pattern as should be spent upon the saving strategy. One of the hardest things for retirees to do is to actually spend money in retirement. That fear of running out of money, it's real. But good financial planning can help you feel confident in your decision making. Simplistic financial planning using the straight line expense analysis can cause you to underspend in retirement. Consider the smile based expense approach when configuring your retirement withdrawal strategy. Of course, there are a number of great ways to help protect your nest egg from healthcare costs later on in life. The triple tax free health savings account long-term care insurance, and life insurance with death benefit acceleration can all be extremely smart ways to help you live a comfortable retirement. Good financial planning is always a work in progress because we're dealing with incomplete information. We don't know what the future has in store, what future rates of return, inflation, expenses, or taxes will look like. The good news is that you can always course correct ongoing monitoring of your financial plan can help you keep on course for a successful retirement. Get started by downloading my new ebook, Accelerating Your Path Toward Prosperity. I'll provide a link to it in the notes. So what do you think? Is the smile-based approach a better way to look at retirement expenses? Let me know down in the comments. Do you have thoughts on how to optimally do it? I love for you to put those in the comments because YouTube loves engagement and I want to hear from you. I try to answer as many comments as possible. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like and of course, smash that subscribe button, hit that little bell so you know whenever I release a new financial planning video.